Genghis Khan, known to his family as Temujin, was born about 1167 into a noble family. His father was a powerful Mongol leader, but he was poisoned by enemies. Genghis lived most of his childhood fleeing from enemy clans, but later, when he was older, at a, in about the 12th century, he made an alliance with a powerful Mongol leader, and from there on, with the right political strategies, he kept on moving up. Genghis Khan always made sure never to trust an ally too much as a result of previous experiences. He broke up other Mongol tribes and forced able men to join new military units with no tribal affiliations. Also, Genghis Khan chose many military and political officials for leadership. However, his choices were not based on kinship or tribal status, but on their talents and loyalty to him. Other than their reign, the Mongols' military tactics and equestrian skills were far better than the neighboring clans. One of Genghis Khan's favorite military tactics was to trick an enemy into pursuing them. And while being pursued, he and his men would shoot arrows off the back of their horses to ultimately destroy the off-guard enemies. Everything about them was more advanced. Although he spent most of his life on horseback, Genghis Khan and his military established a capital city at Karakorum, present-day Karhorn in Mongolia. As the globe shows, he and his men expanded in almost every direction connecting much of Eurasia. And keep in mind, when he came across a Mongol clan, the clan would either surrender immediately or all men, women, and children would be slaughtered. So now you guys are probably thinking, yeah, this guy was a boss, but what happened after he died? Well, the answer is, is that he divided his empire into four khanates or sections for his sons. But as you might expect, they all fought for more lands, and one of his sons, Kublai Khan, came out on top. But the interesting thing is, is that Kublai did not continue to expand and take after his father, but he ruled from a capital city in Korea.